I don't think there's a, a variability between centers. Uh, and uh, we know that it uh, depends on the time period from transplant. You may have different risk factors or different stratification uh, factors uh, to identify patients with CMV reactivation or with any other kind of infection. Uh, early on, between uh, probably uh, the period of peri-engraftment until day 60 or day 90, this is the highest risk period uh, for uh, this specific uh, viral infection, which is CMV, because these patients, they still did not recover their uh, uh, immunity the way we wanted. They're st still lacking probably CMV-specific T cell response. Uh, and also they may have complications uh, from the transplant, uh, which put them at risk for reactivation as well as CMV and organ disease, which we worry about the most. Uh, and that's how people, uh, you know, try to stratify patient. But I think the main risk factors, uh, and this is from the get-go, that we identify patient at risk is the CMV serology of the recipient as well as the donor sometimes, but mainly the recipient. If they are CMV seropositive, then we know they are from the get-go at risk for CMV reactivation when you compare to recipient or CMV seronegative with no, no prior exposure uh, to CMV. And after that, you build other certify, you know, you have other certifying risk factors, like we, I mentioned earlier, graft versus host disease, uh, the type of transplant, if it's T-cell depleted or not, uh, and also uh, the treatment of graft versus like corticosteroids and other immunosuppressive therapy. Donor zero status for CMV uh, is also important. Um, what we found that uh, in mm, few published studies that if donor is seropositive for CMV, it may provide some protection for recipients down the line with quicker probably recovery of their T cell responses uh, for CMV. Uh, so this is one of the factors sometimes we looked at, uh, and there is uh, good data uh, from big databases looking into the impact of, C of donor CMV seropositivity on the outcome of CMV reactivation or CMV disease. But what is more interesting, at least uh, in my mind, the recent data from uh, one of the centers in Seattle, Fred Hodge, uh, published recently as well as from CIBMTR database, uh, what they looked at to see if any level of CMV viremia or detection in the uh, blood would put patient at higher risk or at disadvantage for survival when you compare to patient who never reactivated their CMV. And actually it turned out to be true in this, uh, at least these two uh, major studies where we found, we look, when we look at the data, we, f we see that any level of CMV reactivation or the anemia, I would say, because they did a viral load in these studies or antigenemia, and it, it, uh, you know, the mortality is, is much higher than patient who never had CMV reactivation or the anemia and antigenemia. So by having CMV reactivation, it put patient at disadvantage for survival compared to patient who never reactivated their CMV. Uh, so I think this is an interesting observation where now we take it much more seriously, patient with CMV reactivation, although we, you know, we've been treating, we've been, uh, you know, uh, we've been addressing this in the past, but at least now we have some evidence showing that CMV reactivation or viremia, it's bad news usually for patients.